rises up, the shot, and it's good! It's good! Wisconsin has won! Uh, let's not miss, bitch. Bruzewitz to midcourt. Rust has it, lets it go! Yes, it what the hell am I doing here? <laughs> Taylor the 20 to the 50 cuts inside 10 5 touchdown Wisconsin Welcome, Welcome back to Badger Notes After Dark brought to you by Big Banner Sports Network Full house tonight with the boys Dylan's still nursing the throat He's a throat goat so he's nursing that <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm going to be leading this off again Fellas how we doing? <laughs> you know my old man uh, My old man Tom Graff always said You suck one dick and you're a cocksucker your whole life So <laughs> Yeah, Jay out here. I Jay with the flamethrower out the gate. Boys, I'm hot right now. I don't know. It's just coming to me. Hey, okay. let the, fuck letting them cook. Let them beast, brother. <laughs> Badgers win one game, and I'm a fucking new man. <laughs> There's action uh, different right away. Speaking, speaking of Badgers. Speaking of the throats. Boys, speaking of the throat goats, Badgers, Kamar McGee all the way back. Oh. 78. 66 uh game kind of got squirrely at the end there i'm not gonna lie boys i did have Rutgers plus 10 so i was really rooting for them to hit that <laughs> at the end there and backdoor the shit out of that they didn't i was hedging my happiness uh actually i told you guys i sent a text in the group chat game over when Rutgers took a you sure 40, did 47 40 lead the Badgers went on a 32-10 run after that. Uh, credit to me for uh, <laughs> getting the Badgers going. Did you cool. see how no one responded when you said that? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Sports with Jay, emotional roller coaster. Oh, fucking guy. Guy. I'm just Don't a catalyst. Mood, I, I get the team going. I I'm just I'm here to voice my frustrations. But I said it a few weeks ago when AJ Store dunked that it was a, a season changing dunk. And the same thing happened today. Season changing okay. DM to you guys. Credit well, no, me. see, I'm with you. I kind of, I kind of thought season changing putback dunk when he had that one today. And I thought of you, Jay, and I was yeah, leaving it for the show. But I was like, hey, this guy, couple season changing plays when they do the old, uh, was it like road or journey, whatever they do yeah. on BPN. When they play the DVD. Yeah, they're showing those AJ store dunks did. Yeah. But yeah, it was really – it was the Kamari McGee game. Like, honestly, I, we said – again, too, I I was – not that I'm always wrong, but I'm always wrong. And I thought that maybe we were just romanticizing Kamari McGee being out because we just look for excuses for why the team struggles. But, Coop, what, Kamari McGee didn't know. What did you see? Kamari McGee, Kamari McGee balled out. Just like two of the people on this podcast knew he would, thought he would. Have been defending his honor all season. Me and Dylan, dude. McGee freaks. What are we doing here, fellas? We've been how many games have Dylan and I been saying? That, that you know, Kamari McGee, you might not seem like it. Big, big loss. Big loss. What did he do today? Did he, did he go on like a 9-0 run by himself or something like that? He's looking like prime Kobe Bryant. There. Yeah. He had, a, he had four fouls, but he played great defense. Wild how good Chucky Hepper can be when we have someone who can spell him. We can actually get him rest. Um. So, yeah, I'm going to take my victory lap on Kamara McGee, and I'm bringing Dylan with me because we were on it since the minute he got injured, how important he was to this team. And I don't give a fuck that we played Rutgers, who's a bottom feeder of the Big Ten, and we probably should have beat him by 20 more points than we did. But I'm taking it. Kamara McGee all the way back, the program all the way back. I think he was. I don't think he missed a shot today. He didn't know he was five of five. Like I said, he had four fouls, played great defense. I was just, I felt so satisfied that at least I had one victory lap to take on this podcast today because I'm not going to take one for the fact that we beat Rutgers in the Greg Guard shit. We should be a team like Rutgers by more points than we did today. So I'm glad Kamara McGee gave me the uh, victory lap. And one last thing when he shot that three today and it was in midair. I was the coach. He was like, oh, fuck, 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 fuck. And then I went, I was like, fuck yeah, Kamari, that's right. Great shot. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was – well, it was interesting because Kamari McGee, like you said spell Chucky, and he did a little bit right away. But they but played a lot together. And they played a lot together, and they had that lineup of Kamari McGee, Chucky, and Blackwell on the court with Tyler Wall and Crowley. Yep. Like, it, it worked. Ryan, where are you at 
are you cooled off at all on Greg Gard, or or how do you feel after? He's that probably doubling down this fucking guy. <laughs> well, I, I mean, I I don't I don't like I said before, like I told uh, Dylan when he's here a couple weeks ago, and when I said in your absence last week, I'm not big on regular season accomplishments. Um, so, but but it was a great win. Uh, I predicted the boys would win. I didn't think they would cover. Mm-hmm. But senior night at the Cole Center against a, a bottom feeder Rutgers, like if you don't win that one. Um, I didn't necessarily cool off on guard just because my, my questions has always been always been philosophical. Like what are the expectations and what, what does success look like? But I'm not going to, just because I don't understand the destination doesn't mean I'm not going to appreciate the journey and the process. Tonight was a good win. Um, it was a win. I don't know about a good win. It was a yeah, win. That's why I was, I was going to take back the good, but I'm also, I'm like one thing I always try to pride myself on is I'm always going to be accountable. And I'm not going to sit here and slam Greg Gard. I think he did okay today. The boys missed a lot of shots early. And uh, turned the ball over a lot more. A lot more than even it seemed like. Sorry to interrupt you, but. No, you're fine. It, it, but at the end of the day, he can't make the shots. He can't make the passes. and He can't turn it over. So exactly. I don't think. I think he did what he was supposed to do today. I mean, he's a good coach. I never said he wasn't a good coach. But I never thought the impact of Kamari McGee. Like, literally, that kid must be the MVP getting 11 of his 37 points of the entire season uh, all in one game. You could definitely tell he was out for a while because those fresh legs mm-hmm. looked a lot different compared to the rest of the roster. So it was he's a good like, win. It was a win. He's like the Pat Bev equivalent on the Bucks. I feel like, that game was. Just that spark plug you need who – and Dame Lillard said this about Pat Bev. Like, you don't know how he's going to help you win, but a guy that that's going to help you win – and it's just game to game. Is it going to be his defense, his rebounding? Tonight it was his, it was his scoring. Like he's a just a player who can help you in so many ways, and we've missed that. And I think even Robbie Hummel said it on the uh, broadcast tonight. Like he's and not these words, but he's one of the guys when he's out there. Ain't nobody give a fuck more than Kamari McGee. Like not many people. And Tyler Wall, too, he played like shit in the first half and didn't have a great game. But not many people are going to play harder than guys like Kamari McGee or Tyler Wall. They're balls to the walls. And getting another guy like that who can come off the bench with Blackwell, who's the same way, that goes a long ways. And I think we saw that tonight. Yeah, I mean, getting Kamari back, like, he's just somebody who brings the juice and, like, he gives you so much lineup flexibility. Like, yeah, I, I, you know, like I said before, you can't let the absence of a Kamari McGee break you. Like that, you have to be able to adjust and be better than that. You know, but one thing that we've seen really dating back to the Virginia game, which is where things kind of flipped in a positive note early in the season, that's when Kamari got involved in the rotation and it allowed them to play smaller, which is one thing that I don't understand yeah. why more teams in college basketball don't do but you know when they are able to run when they have the right matchup or they can play kamari chucky and john their perimeter defense is so much better and you know to your point before about just getting chucky a break like yeah it's it's that but it's also that there really isn't anybody else on the roster who can defend big 10 caliber point guards you know at a high enough level like and that's one of those things where like you're a high major program. Like you can't really justify carrying three point well, guards on a roster. That's just not how that works. And so it, the having him there to be able to provide that energy, you know, remove Chucky off the floor and not kind of miss a beat on defense. Like you saw the energy he brought to the building, which yes, I understand it was his return, but just in general, he brings a lot to this team in his limited role. And, you know, no, he might not be the savior, but tonight he was certainly the difference. Well, I'm like the thing with him and Chucky, and I mean, you could tell his his defensive rotations were a little off tonight. I you kind of got to expect that in his first game back. But when he's up to full speed, guys like him and Chucky, um, in the pick and roll, like they can switch on the guys six 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 seven, and still hold their own. Like that's a valuable piece to have when it's your point guard who can defend that well. And we saw that out of Chucky today. I mean. What do you have like five or six steals today, dude? Yeah, he had five steals. He was he was hawking out there. I mean, he right. he, he he turned he turned the game around in the first half there with a couple of big steals and yeah, uh, the big big flush and transition. You know, he, he yeah. got he got the play he got the place rocking. The cold center was yeah. great tonight. I had in my notes, um, 
Chucky Hepburn was by far the best player on the court tonight, and Kamari McGee was the X factor of the game. That's what I had. Yeah, I want to see those three. I want to see Kamari, Blackwell, and Hepburn together. <clears throat> and if those three play together, and then, Jay, I, I, we just need your uh, game over. If you could do that about halftime of every tournament game, Big Ten tournament. And yeah. Tournament, we would all greatly appreciate it. We're going to need more cool. followers and more followers yeah. subscribers on this channel because I will be placing a bet at halftime of every game that the Badgers will lose going forward. <laughs> oh. yeah. Not all well, you guys, first, brother. You guys get a no fund me started or something. Yeah, so we, we, actively, we can all do our I, part. I definitely did put a live line bet on Rutgers to win that game. So, uh, <laughs> that, that, big fan. Not. You guys definitely – you guys touched on, like, a few different things I wanted to bring up. Guard said at the end of the game that 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 Kamari McGee just plays with so much energy that, like, it's infectious. It's impossible for the guys around. Like, yeah. when Kamari McGee is going and making reverse layups on back-to-back possessions, how, as a player on that team, do you not step up defensively? And I think you did – like, Chucky is always pretty – you know, effective on defense, trying to get steals and stuff. But his defensive on the ball pressure was even greater with Kamari McGee on the court. It was insane how how effective it was. And then Ryan, you said that you like to be accountable. You're way better than I am because if the Badgers lost that game, you guys would have never heard from me again. Uh, and <laughs> lastly, <laughs> lastly, Dylan, you talked about playing small, and coaches don't want typically don't like to do that but i just i wish the badgers would play small so much more because i don't feel like our bigs really match up that well against other bigs no so you got to concede something if we're already not getting the best defense from our bigs then make that other team adjust to you and play small and i think we saw how (laughs) effective blackwell mcgee and and hepburn were and you got that burst from mcgee and then mcgee picks up that fourth fab foul and oh yeah aj store is still yeah person who exists and even with his questionable shot selection threw down an absolute hammer of a dunk and made the leading shot blocker in the country scared to contest the shot like that shit's insane my my three my three-year-old daughter gasped when he dunked that (laughs) and she doesn't even know what she's watching (laughs) she's been raised right that's insane i also wanted to bring up and ask you dylan because i know that you're you're just really in touch with like kind of the the strategy is behind, you know, the offense and defense. But it, the Badgers in the second half, they started switching all of those hand, all of those handoffs. Uh, yeah, in the wing, guard to guard, not necessarily the bigs, but that pretty much stifled anything Rutgers was trying to do to switch. I, I feel like that adjustment made a huge difference in the game. I, I I completely agree, and you know that's one of those things where you know we can go back twenty years to to Bo Ryan, and they they don't. That they, they run a very particular system, and it's one thing that we have seen Greg do a little bit of when he has people he trusts, and that's what, like I will fully acknowledge Greg Gard is really stubborn and in his ways, but when he has the people that he can trust, and when I mean what I say, when I mean that, like, and this year's team that's Blackwell, that's Hepburn, that's McGee, and that's Wall. When those four guys are on the floor in any capacity, he is willing to switch matchups because he believes that all of them. Like all of those guys communicate incredibly well. They're all going to be in position. And again, it goes back to our, like the regular, like the early season tournament. Like that is when Wisconsin can be more impactful on defense. And I don't even think that they were, you know, fantastic defensively tonight, but they were markedly better. And he does not trust, he does not like AJ Store is not somebody who at this point he trusts to no. make those adjustments. And so, you know, I like I understand you got to th- like I that you have to throw some tendency breakers in there. You can't be completely predictable, but uh, you know it also comes down to a trust factor and like right, wrong, or otherwise. Greg Gard is not going to throw those wrenches in the game plan unless he trusts completely the people on the floor to execute. Kamari gives him enough options defensively where he believes he can do that out on the perimeter, and I completely agree. It made a huge difference. It cut down on dribble penetration a ton an absolute ton and that is something that has just decimated us recently and so i'm hopeful that uh you know ha- having enough guys having that flexibility even in short spurts something that we can see on a slightly more regular basis and kind of regress to the mean and just try to be you know maybe a, a top 45 ish defense by ken palm and i think that would be i think that would be a substantial that, that would make a substantial difference well and one thing i didn't understand 
it was basically the entire first half and the first part of the second half. Like I didn't get why we were going under screens because the bigs weren't rotating either a weren't rotating or B like weren't rotating fast enough. And I get there's some mid range jump shots, but Rutgers hit a couple mid range jump shots late in the first. And then early in the second, when they built like that 10 point lead or whatever, we were like, fuck man. Like if we can't stop this, I don't know how we're going to win this fucking game. And like you said, I think they started switching more, maybe hedging a little more. Um, well, Hummel said at one point in the second half that the, I, th- I believe is the early second half that the Badgers were willing to concede the mid range game to that's, Rutgers. That's pretty much the centerpiece of the entire defensive system that they run is they want you to take that statistically. That is the, What's the worst time. shot. That's yeah. Important. And so like they, they they're going to bait you into that. They want you to take that and floaters like that's, that's why we play drop coverage. That's why we play defense the way we do. You know, and and sometimes it comes back to bite you. Like I think about a game, like when we played Iowa, and you know Josh Dix hits fucking nine of ten mid range yeah. jump shots. Like, yeah, you're done. You're cooked. Like, it's not it's not gonna work. But in general, like that's that's what you're willing to give up in the system, and that's that's them getting what they want. I just feel like a couple times like the hedges by the big guy wasn't like wasn't hard enough, and it's like, well, you can't play this style of defense if you're not gonna fully commit to at least hedging for. A half or one and a half seconds, two seconds. So whoever that guard is can kind of drop and rotate back over. But anywho, yeah, yeah, I like the point that was brought out about, about adjustments. Like I, we, that was something we were talking about literally last week about guard not doing. Mm-hmm. So it's like I, I'm questioning, like, where's the consistency? Because it's like last week it felt like there was no adjustments made, and they just let uh, Marcus Domas just go bananas and like never sent doubles. And then today they're passing off coverage and it's like, is it because it was Illinois or because it was Rutgers? Like, is, obviously your opponent matters and like Rutgers is a very youthful team. Did they think like passing it off was the, advantageous? But it just seems like, I don't know. I, I, I question the, the defensive play calling. Why you didn't send someone last week and now you have a different philosophy this week? Because the one thing about Greg Gard being here nine years is he's pretty consistent with his schemes of things he wants to do. And it seems like you made adjustments one time, you didn't make it this time. So, or you made it this time, but not last time. So, I'm wondering where the consistency is. I, I I'm definitely in agreement with you that like he did not before, but I, I I think the answer is pretty simple, at least in my eyes. And it's like, yeah, Greg Gard has been very consistent over a long period of time, you know, in doing those things. But again, to his greatest fault, like he is also very stubborn and if you don't have his trust you're not doing those things and he doesn't have a lineup where he could trust three perimeter players to all do the same thing therefore you can't you can't ask you can't ask that of them yeah like if you if you don't have three perimeter players and ideally even one of your bigs that you trust to be completely assignment sound throwing that off like puts you probably a step and a half behind in your rotation and and you were better off just playing one on one at that point. And like obviously, in the case of Damask, like he he wasn't missing anything. But you know, if that that's not a defense of the way he is, like I think he is too stubborn in that way of thinking. But that's why he's not doing it. Well, that leads me to my question then: is everybody but Wall is coming back, but everyone is going to be an upperclassman? They've been together for multiple years, so why doesn't he trust them three to four years into the players? They haven't well, given I mean, anything like well, I, I, I think that's part like after I, three years, like they should, like Chucky's been here and played almost every game since he's been here. Like um, a lot of those guys have, like you don't trust them to execute those things. It just seems like if it, it's were, not, a, I get it, but I feel like he trusts when, them. Just say, but them. when you're talking about defense, like yeah, he obviously trusts him, but it's about trusting a unit and playing as an entire unit takes takes everybody. Yeah, and so it, it's not a matter of trusting. You know, Chucky Hepburn, like it's quite frankly not trusting an AJ store in those moments, you know, and it's a guy like you you do trust Max and you do trust John. Like there are people that you do trust, but it's you you can't make wholesale changes when you have people that you can that you know that it's on film that like they cannot execute these these things that you're asking of them. Like you're 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 putting yourself in a position to get picked apart the way that people tend to do when Connor is on the floor. You know, AJ Storage is so much more athletic and physical that it, it doesn't look as bad. I mean, I know that sounds 
it's not like a terrific explanation, but it's not a matter of him not trusting those guys. It's a matter of if somebody is on the floor in which he can't trust, like you can't ask anybody else to do something else. You just can't. Yeah, and I want to point out too, just we said it last week, Wisconsin in their losses is giving up an average of 80 points a game, 80 plus points a game. And then again tonight, obviously, they finally winning one, you know, <clears throat> now won three of their last 10, I think it is. And Rutgers struggle, you know, they got a couple cheap ones late to get to 66. But I just think it's definitely my bias here because Wisconsin probably won. But I just think if the Badgers can continue to hold teams under 70 points, because they average 75 a game scoring, like if they can keep teams under 70 points, they're going to be really, really tough to beat. Oh, yeah. As long as they take care of the basketball, I you know would would tend to yeah, agree with you. Like the, the number that stands out to me right now, when I got the box score here, is that you know the turnover percentage was nineteen point four. Like that's that's way too high, you know, for a team that plays with the amount of possessions we do. The first the ten got, minutes was horrendous. Yeah, like I, I I believe you know that Wisconsin can can score with you know most anybody that they play. And to your point, if they can play you know, even just decent defense, like I think that they will win a lot of games. But if they don't take care of the basketball, I think it's mostly a moot point. Yeah, I mean, that is the other thing is like to be nitpicky. It's just like they don't put – they rarely put five good, like great efforts on the court at the same time. Like Wall turned the ball over four times in that first half. Like maybe he's pressing because it's senior night. But it's like obviously – you hate to make excuses. Like Klesman couldn't hit water if he fell out of a boat at one point in time. No, it, they're just not right. putting, they're not putting five guys together on the court at the same time very often right now. And then when they did, they went on a 32 10 run. So <laughs> it's like Yeah, they're just not playing with you know the same type of cohesion that they were before you know it's like you've seen steps towards until today when we got know, it, it, it coming back in moments um you know but something's just been a little off i you know i'm in agreement that it kind of seems like on any given night like you got two guys lately that you can count on to put it in and you really can't afford for either one to cool off as of late so yeah. it was it was nice to see them you know score some points obviously they they really fucking doing their best to Pissed, pissed away a little bit there at the end, but uh, they were trying to give Tyler a nice moment instead yeah. of like, let's, hey, let's turn it over four fucking times fucking in a row. Right? <laughs> then, we'll, then we'll send him off. <laughs> That's what all of us Greg Gar believers had to be like, dude, if we lose this fucking game, so <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Waiting, for, waiting for Chucky and Store to check back in. <laughs> kind, of just, kind of just segue here, then a little bit, boys. Like, what's your level of, uh, of hope, optimism? What do you need to see at Purdue uh, this weekend to to make you feel good going into the the Big Ten tournament? Keep it within ten, eight. You'll that's what will make you happy. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be mad at it. Is okay. what it is. What about you, Ryan? Yeah, I'm I'm probably gonna have to say don't get don't get uh, double digits. Yeah, uh, don't get embarrassed. Like. Yeah, I was going to say, I mean, I guess you could even lose by like 12 or 14 and still have it be respectable. I think, like we've talked about on the show many times, especially like with the football season, it's how do you lose? Like, are you down by 30 and you make it a eight-point game at the end? Like, you still got your ass beat. Or was it, you know, a five, six, seven-point game and then, you know, you get into that and battling yeah. end and then now it's a 12-point game? Yeah. So just don't, like, I agree with Coop. Like, you want to keep it probably within 10, but just at the end of the day, don't get embarrassed. I mean, you played them tight at home, but obviously it's on the road. But you know what yeah, they man. are. They're going to go to Edie, and they got the other dude with the goatee that has an absolute strap from three. So we need a someone needs to fucking taint Zach Edie's fucking weed gummies. We need to figure something out here. Well, he kind of was gimpy at the end of the game, and now that they have the Big Ten regular season locked up, they have a double buy. Like, I, I it's his senior night, so he's we should just send like back. Isaac Gard out you there. You to just fucking wonder, yeah, him. I just you just Can't, wonder, man. How Isaac Gard, he was out tonight. Didn't you read the injury report? <laughs> I don't care about the injury. Report. He's been out just almost as he's been out 
Well, I was like going to tweet minutes. it out just to be a douche. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Dylan? What do you want to see this weekend against Purdue at Matt? I think I'm in a, I think I'm in a pretty similar place. Uh, to me, it's a little bit less about the score. Um, yeah, like do we play well? Do we play hard? More, more about what is what do we look like defensively? Um, you know, at this point, we have all the pieces we're going to have. Like I understand that we're not getting 100 percent of Kamari. That's fine. We have to accept that, but. What does it look like defensively? Like we, I think we had gotten to a point early in the season where we were scoring at such an efficient clip that we really got away from what has made Wisconsin, Wisconsin, like their, their identity as a whole, I think has just been a little bit of a question mark. And so for me, what I would feel good about is if like they sit down on defense, every single possession, communicate well, like, I, 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 you know, be disruptive in the lane, active hands. Like, I want to see them as a unit play some good fucking defense, make Purdue have to work for it. You know, like it, one of the things is like you had with when when you go against a guy like Zach Eady, there's no incredible plan that all of a sudden just takes him out of the game. It's just deciding who are you willing to let beat you, and you know in the last game, like a lot of Purdue's guards hit a lot of fucking shots and they did a great job on him. And so maybe that's what that looks like again this time is, you know, just daring them to hit the shots. And if they hit them, they hit them. But I just would like to see a lot more defensive intensity. Um, and again, I'm not asking for, I'm not asking for things that we've seen in years past, but uh, that's probably been one of my single greatest frustrations is last year. I mean, that was not a good Wisconsin team. I think we all know that. You know, but that team fucking fought every game. Like that was a Ken Palm top twenty defense in the country, and we returned ninety two percent of our production. You know, losing a Jordan Davis, adding an AJ Store, and so it's just hard for me to accept the defensive fall from grace. Um, you know, not just like I'm not just trying to be a numbers guy or anything like that, but it just all all of the pieces were there to be at least as good as you were a year ago, and uh, I, I I think at least to some degree they're learning right now just how important playing defense is going to be for them moving forward. And so I just want to see them string together some – put together solid defensive game. I want to see them have some good habits, and I can live with whatever the box score says. And, Jay, after you go, uh, I'd like to revise my answer. Um, I wasn't – I hadn't even thought about my answer. Uh, <laughs> So you I go have ahead. A question, but doesn't have the answer. I love it. No, because I was gonna say if they don't lose, I'm out. But <laughs> if they don't win, I'm out. <laughs> that would be too. That'd be too on brand. So I, I'm with you guys. Just just make it halfway close. Make it look like you care. Don't get blown out. Like yeah. that, that's really all I'm. Connor goes for thirty, and uh, that's it. No, no big deal. Also, quick question. Sorry, Ryan. Before you go again. On the broadcast today, they said their guy had him as a had us as a number six seed. Mm -hmm. Am I the only one who thinks that's fucking stupid? We should be like a ten to twelve, or am I so, out of pocket here? They don't really do so, that. I was say so. I they do the play, don't they do the playing game with like eleven seeds? Remember that one year Tennessee went to the Sweet Sixteen in the first four. Or whatever? Yeah, but so they like really value quad one wins and quad two wins. And the Badgers don't technically have any bad losses this year because they haven't lost a quad three game. So, I get that, but I'm just saying like after the slide. But there, like, so that's part of the evaluation too now though, is like they're not. So in the past they used to hold like your final 10 games that had a lot more weight and they don't, they don't look at that now. Like they can only, the committee only looks at your body of work. And if you're if that's all you're looking at, Wisconsin has a, a pretty good resume. But I'm in agreement. Like, it being We're a not six a six seed, seed. Do, doesn't feel like we are deserving of that in this moment. I completely agree with you. But uh, I learned recently that they are no longer allowed to throw really any weight into your final ten games. Well, that's and dumb. So, and so that is why we are sitting at a. Seat. I don't. I don't know if you guys have noticed though. The projected eleven seeds are all fucking gauntlets. It's like. Murray, it's like mm -hmm. Mid State. It's like uh, Indiana State. It's a bunch of like twenty-five plus win mid major teams. Those are good are teams. Nasty, right? Right now, so. I don't. I don't want any part of Indiana State. Man. <laughs> yeah, their head coach no. is taking a serious gig soon. Fucking Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. 
Ryan, what does your revised answer look like? I, I am curious what where you're deciding to change. Well, I mean, I think I think that's the baseline that we all kind of laid out is don't get blown out. But I have a new thing that would make me happy. And I think I want to see more experimentation with Chucky, Kamari, uh, and Blackwell on the floor. I want to see that more of extended. At the end of the day, if you win this game or lose this game, it's not really going to affect any outcome. You're still going to right. be probably the same seed in both tournaments. So I, no, I want to see. I want really. to see you said the what? Badgers win, they guarantee themselves a double bye. So. Yeah. Okay. Well, so it does matter, but I was yeah. going to bring that up too. Yeah, that, that's we, fair. If but, we beat Purdue, we're a, a five seed probably. I I, I kind of don't think it's going to matter one. that much in the grand scheme of things. I think they'd have to w- win, pretty much get to the championship of the Big Ten tournament to be a five, in my opinion. Otherwise, I think they're still going to be a six. I mean, beating Purdue and Lafayette is. It's a big deal for sure. I I just think they got enough work, and I'm 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 with Ryan. I just don't think that ultimately the outcome of the game is going to matter in a significant. So I want those, way. yeah. So that's that leads to my point of I just I want to see good rotations because at the end of the day, like I said, and I'm going to stand by. I'm not huge on regular season accolades. <laughs> I want to see what you do in March. So I want to see them work through, like you were talking about with on the defensive side. I want to see this offensive side how they work together. If you got to go small, I want them to make sure they get all those kinks out. So when you get to the Big Ten, Big Ten tournament, you have it all set. When you get to the NCAA tournament, you have all set because Kamari coming back <clears throat> first game back, it was good to get his feet wet. He had a great game, but you also don't want to hit that wall of coming back after injury. You don't have stamina. You don't have your legs. And then he's not really as effective in the tournament because I'm big on what happens in March. So I want to see them make their best run. I want to see a Sweet 16 run. I want to see at least a couple games into the Big Ten tournament. So whatever well, it's what's the, this game, what's the difference between Sweet Sixteen and losing when they're on to sixty four or thirty two to you? Then, if March and results in March is all that matters, that means national championship. So what the fuck's the difference? What I mean for this year at Sweet Sixteen seems like that that would be winning in the national. Because the happen. way you make it sound though seems like you like you won't be ha- like it's national championship or bust. Well, I'm not saying that. I, I, I've never said that. It's just winning. Yes, it's yes you have. Well, I know. I know the the infant or the the really small percentage chance that they have to win a national title. Like I'm not. I'm not dumb. Like I get that. That's very very small. But at the end of the day, are you attempting to get there? It feels like when I when to go back to what we've talked about before. Like getting to the Sweet Sixteen should be a standard. Like here at Wisconsin, that, it should be a standard. that is not true. That's what I think it should be. So if you get to the sweet, you know how hard it is to get to the sweet sixteen every year. I mean, do I mean we... that that standard is kind of ins- I mean, like that's wild, it's, great to, bro. it's great to want that, and to, but I mean, like to expect them to get there. No, I didn't say expect. Like, I making say the tournament should be the standard. Making the tournament is a. If you have that as your standard as a program, pretty if fucking high standard. standard. If making the t- a field of sixty eight is your only standard. Then you might as well give Greg Gard a lifetime deal because, like, he's like three hundred and something plus teams, dude. Yeah, but a lot of those teams can only get in if they have a miracle run through their tournament. So, like, how many teams can legitimately make it? You say three hundred and thirty, but it's like out of a sixty-eight team field, I three hundred and thirty because any of them can win a fucking conference tournament or get an automatic bid. Right, I think they'll get one spot from their conference, though. I think to your previous point, though, Ryan, like I I agree with that completely, like just in terms of I want to see the right things. And I'm hopeful that that those right things, you know, in terms of putting together some strong rotations, like get, get win a couple of games, string a few together so that we can actually have a product we feel good about going into March. Like that would be a win. You know, I, I don't care if in, you know, it, it start, I want it to start tonight i wanted to roll into purdue and i want to see a game or two in the big 10 tournament where we can be like you know what okay we feel good about what the rotations look like right now where we're headed going into march regardless of matchup like we have our answers and we know what everyone is capable of it capable of at this point you know you're not getting 100 percent from from everybody but I, I i'm in agreement with you i just want to see the right things i want to see them feel confident that they have those things going into the games that are going to matter here. Can we just go back to real quick to the, uh, to the, to the math? 
so I get what you're saying. 330 all legitimately have the option or the, uh, the opportunity to get in. But for instance, in like the WEAC conference and all these other conferences, they get one representative. Like think about how awful okay. this season has been over the last 12 games and they would be a six seed. So the idea that they're the Big Ten, whether you're <laughs> number six in the Big Ten and number six in uh, the WEAC or one of these conferences that gets in, like those two are not the same. So the idea that 330 can technically make it, Wisconsin's in a power five. Like, the, we are okay. such a proud program. They've been to Final Fours. They've been to National Championships. They've been to Elite Eight. Getting to the tournament should be like bottom floor expectation. And I know that you said 300 and something can make it. But if you're the sixth or seventh best team in your conference and you still make the tournament, like how is that like how is that anything to like toot your horn about? Because other teams have to literally win their conference tournament, and that's the only representative they get in the entire thing where – they take six at six, seven. When the Big Ten's good, sometimes they take eight at largest. And it's like, I, I don't know. Those to me, if you're in the Big Ten and you make the tournament, that should be the bare, bare minimum. You should strive for national titles. You should have a plan to get to national titles. You should recruit like you want to win a national title. You should get to sweet sixteens every few years. It doesn't have to be every single year, but the standard should every be every few years. That's a wild take. Uh, maybe you I just be, have, you I, should be one of the best sixteen teams in the country every two or three years, or win it and then be irrelevant for. I mean, look at Virginia in a sport where having the best player on the court can be the entire difference. Like you could have four out of your five players could be worse than the other team, and you have one guy who's just the best player in the country, and that could be the whole difference. Yeah, I, I do think in. I think in general that I that I agree with what Ryan is saying in terms of like that being kind of like a barometer of expectation. I don't no, think like making really, the I, tournament I like shouldn't be a disappointment. Like I, I, no, that should but be that, the, that, the first round shouldn't be unless we do it fucking ten years in a row. Like it shouldn't be a disappointment. I I I think that like those can and maybe should be a barometer of expectation whether or not it's realistic is an entire discussion an entirely different discussion that's just kind of but it's it's just been the standard of what is at wisconsin like to and be, it's hard to do that's why it's it, so crazy it, it is and that's why i'm saying whether or not that's realistic is an entirely different discussion i do think that the what ryan has outlined as like these should be the goals like i'm i'm in agreement with that i, I don't think going to the sweet 16 every year is realistic, but I do think that you should have an expectation of trying to put a product out there that's capable of going to the NCAA tournament. And once you get there, hopefully advancing to that second weekend, like, no, I don't, I'm not going to view it as some massive failure if they don't. But like, I do think that that should be kind of like what we are hoping on. I, I, I don't know if what I'm saying is making sense. Like whether no, or not, again, whether or not that's realistic, I think is a totally different conversation than, what the expectation should be, you know, making the tournament as a, you know, power, whatever program in college, power six for college basketball, like you need to be a top 36 team, you know, and that's, it's doable. There are going to be years where that's not the case. Yeah. And, and that also needs to be like, in some cases understood, but I don't think that we should have, in my opinion, back to back years where we don't make the dance. Like I, I think if one happens, like that is a disappointment. And I, we haven't. But right. You know, I, I think missing it once is it sucks. You know, it, it is a bummer. And then you know, we had a stretch of years and we missed it again. And and that sucks. And I'm not saying that that's okay either. Like it the expectation should be to go to the dance, whether or not that's totally realistic, because that's just the bar that was set. That's that's what it's what Wisconsin is as a program. And again, I, I I just I want to separate the expectation and what's realistic because I think that both can be right. Like I every year, every year that we have a good team, my thought is I'm hope I hope they make it to a sweet 16. Like that's my hope for them, you know. But making the dance to me is an expectation. That 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 for me, I guess, is where I where like my expectations lie. Is because that if you make it to the sweet 16, anything is possible. Is that expectation going to change though with conference realignment? Because you're adding traditional big or traditional basketball programs that are going to push you down the pecking order. So, for instance, USC, they are what they are, but being in the Big Ten and having money and getting like kids like Bronny, like 
they're not going to always be an easy out. UCLA is a proud program. Oregon's had tournament success. Why? I don't know much about Washington, so I'm not going to pretend to know. But like where Wisconsin's like, what, number six in the Big Ten right now? Like you're now getting pushed. Like let's say you have a season like this and you're getting down to push down to seven or eight and you start missing tournaments. I think we're better than every team. Or I think and even more like respectable than every team or program you named except UCLA. Yeah, but we're also better and more respectable than Penn State and Rutgers, and they both beat our ass about a month ago. So the idea that like we just beat Rutgers today. No, I know, but I what I'm saying though is like you're going to still have those games of the season. Like you're not going to just sweep those new Pac-12 schools that are coming. You're not just going to oh those aren't just four four wins right off the top. Like those are going to be challenging games, and they're going to be those four. I look at is higher than the Big Ten floor where we you know capitalize on some of those wins. So that's why I look at the guard thing. It's like, I'm never saying we should fire him. I'm saying, what is the standard and what is the expectation of what we're supposed to have? Because I don't think anyone knows. Like, Dylan laid out one. I laid out one. You thought mine was crazy. Dylan honestly makes a lot of sense. But it's like, wow. we have all these fluid ideas of what expectations are. But, like, what are they truly? The guy we got, that we got you on Twitter comparing fucking Greg Gard to Paul Chris's fucking draft rate. That's part of the problem. Well, I, I see those two as one two in the one in the same. They're not at all. It would be farther from. They're not at all. I think it's so different. And we could argue about this for an hour. I it took. Did thank God I had meetings that day at work. I would have spent all day on Twitter, just arguing with you back and forth. I mean, I'd love to see a good reason why they're not the same because everyone wants to tell me because because there's 200 more players every year drafted in the NFL than there is in the NBA. I did look that up actually. Like the the percentage of guys that drafted from college basketball, a Division One college basketball program, to the NBA is is barely over one percent. And then the 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 comparison to football is almost it's like seven and a half percent. So it is a quite significant difference. That there's way more players drafted into the NFL than the NBA. So it is but, not hard. But we don't we shouldn't just use draft as the only metric. But I'm saying like when I look at postseason success, Paul Christ had it. Greg Gard struggles with it. Did he? Like, Did he like, do, the Duke's Mayo Bowl? Congratulations, dude. Don't was you it, was shame it not, the Duke's Mayo Bowl. Didn't, couldn't win a Rose Bowl. did they have the same Bowl. amount of wins, though, technically, in postseason? Like, if yeah, he, and, and, and Paul Crist only gets one a year, where Greg Gard could win. Technically, he could win six in one year, but he's won six in nine years or in eight years. <laughs> this is his ninth year. I'm looking at it like some guy shows up when it's nut cutting time in the postseason. Like, yeah, it's not a playoff game, but it's like winning an Orange Bowl, winning a Cotton Bowl, winning uh, being one point. I mean, that was a lot. His only loss is a one point loss in the Rose Bowl to Justin Herbert. But it, all the other bowl games you win, you get you, they lost Big Ten championship games, but you get there. Like, when is the basketball team ever going to get to a Big Ten championship in the tournament? The difference so you get there. So you, you get there. You get there and that counts. But a regular season Big Ten basketball championship doesn't count. Yeah, that you. But, but if you get to the championship game and get blown out, that counts. But one of those Big Ten championships you shared three ways. The other championship you shared two ways. That, well, that's just fuck. That's PJ Fleck energy. When like, you remember when he tied and had on his. We make we literally on the show have made fun of his ring where he has a Big Ten West trophy on it because they were technically Big Ten West co champions. Like claiming a shared title to me is the same thing we make fun of Minnesota for claiming shared titles from 1942, and the same is him claiming a shared Big Ten division title. I don't – like, and that's another reason why I don't like regular season awards. Like, we're so caught up it's in wild. two regular season titles that were shared. One three-way, which, by the way, that three-way one, they had a point differential of minus nine and finished two and one, and so did Michigan State. The year they tied Illinois in 2022, they only played one time head-to-head and got their ass beat by 13. So why – Who cares? So you lost head-to-head? So – I, I just we were, we were still co conference champs. Who gives a fuck? We had one bad game. Jay, we've been dominating this conversation. I would love to hear you talk. <laughs> for being Mr. Uh, Mr. Voice. for being a not fire guard guy, you're an awfully fire guard guy. Uh. No, I just want it to be. I just want it to be 100. percent Like we fired Chris because he had a bad start to a season with a new offensive coordinator. That, I don't. I don't. It was that. more than that. Yeah, I think it was. According they might to have who? made the postseason with Chris. If they According to common they, sense, they didn't, so recruit, one they, didn't recruit, they didn't recruit for two years under Chris. 
So if he doesn't make one postseason, and then it, we could say he can it's get way different, dude. Doing, it's it's way good. different. There's 18 million bowl games. There's 68 yeah, do, spots in the fucking NCAA tournament. Do you think that the best the, the football program was going in a negative pro- trajectory when Paul Chris was fired? Uh, yes. You think the basketball but program I, is currently in a negative trajectory? From when it where it started when Greg took no. over. Well, that's uh, wild because sure. it, at at the beginning of the season you were all with us that Greg Gard's a great coach. Yeah, I know. Times change. Times change I, and fucking. 11 games? But I would just, I just want well, just you. Just for the record, before Fucking I, Ryan Bayless over here, too. No, for the record, though, before I joined this podcast, I was on last offseason when they missed the tournament. I was very much like, is this the best we're going to do? I, I said I needed to see. This is what I told, like, because I'm on the Discord and I was on Lockdown Badgers with Ryan Herrings. And I said, I want to see Guard go out and get better players. He went out and got John Reynolds. He did. He got Josh Reynolds or whatever Buddy's Reynolds' name is. They left. Josh Reynolds is a football player, but yeah. Noah Reynolds, whatever the kid in Green Bay's name is. He was here for like 12 minutes, but he still landed him, even though he left. And he got AJ Store. And then he brought, um, he got the recru- recruiting class that he did. And I said, hey, I'm going to give him another shot. They had a great start to the season. And then when it bottoms out, like I can change my opinions. I thought no, it was the coach's up. fault, not the players. How dare they? But isn't, didn't he assemble the team? Sure did. I think but he I didn't put the ball over fucking eight, can, eight times in three you can minutes. Place blame on on whoever you want to place blame on to make whatever argument. I'm just gonna place blame on whoever Ryan doesn't place blame on, just so we can but argue. I, I just think if you, I think if you genuinely think that the Badger basketball program right now is in the same <clears> spot <throat> that the Badger football program was when they fired Paul Chris, it's incorrect. Like, I don't think that's even close. No, I'm not saying that. But what so I'm saying, then, oh, we, that's we, that's the only. That's why it's not. Apples to apples, then. But but he, what? He, why did he get fired? Because of tra- the trajectory of the program. Because he was living twenty years in the past. Yeah, I mean, he, he had shown he he had he had shown that he wasn't willing to adapt to the times. But there's reports that say that he was told to hire an offensive coordinator, and he did, and it wasn't going well, and he still did got. Did he fired. know he hired an offensive coordinator who's never called plays? Well, he was told to do it, so he did what he was supposed but to do. He didn't hire the right guy. <laughs> Well, I mean, you're not going to hit on every guy. Oh, 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 oh. Buddy, buddy, you're not going to hit on every guy. Hey, how did? The, why is this three-star recruit flame out? Well, like, hey, you're not going to hit on every guy. Sorry, step away for two seconds to grab a beer, and y'all are flaming Bobby Ingram. <laughs> he did. But I'm just like, we we got rid of. We had standards for the football. This this is why I look at him the same. Not, and I that's why I try to put numbers to it. But at the at the you but at the core of my belief, this is what I this is how I look at it. We got rid of Paul Christ because we have distinct uh, goals and expectations. No. For the program. Yes, they want to. Why are they putting heaters underneath Camp Randall? Because they want to play in a playoff. Right. He lost the locker room. That's why we got rid of him. He was our cake and he lost the locker room. So you could Jim tell room too, right away and four down the stretch. What's that? So didn't Jim have the locker room? He went three and four down the stretch. So did he lose the locker room or was the players just not? Jim didn't have the locker room. That's why he's not the fucking head coach. At the end of the day, I look at it like there was a trajectory that the program was going in the crapper. So we made changes because there's expectations and we have thresholds for standards. On the basketball side, no one knows what the standards are. Is it making the tournament? Is it going to the Sweet 16? Is it contending for national titles? Is it just being respectable? We... We, we know what football expectations are. We don't know what basketball expectations. And to me, I wonder why is the one guy held accountable and the one the other guy, no one has any idea what the expectations are. I just want to keep it fair. And that's where I disagree with you. I think there are there is a standard for the basketball team. It's to make the tournament. And that's yeah. why there's been no action taken on Ray Guard. And I well, then they should say that. And then all this. They're not gonna, why would anybody, what benefit does that do for, for, Chris McIntosh should come yeah. out and say, let's our let's only let's 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 the end of the program is to make the Big Ten tournament. No coach so they want they want a divided team. fan base, one that says fire guard, one that says they, that's what they want. People that's going to happen regardless. Nobody's yeah. ever going to be like, kumbaya, yeah, everybody loves Craig Gart. No no program in the – I bet you there's 1,000 fans that want that want uh, Kentucky's coach fired every year. Duke probably has fan base that 
wants their Shire fired. Like, ah, dude's ever. pretty loaded. I bet everybody, you know. wants that coach fired. He wants him fired right now. Like, nobody's ever going to be 100% in on anybody. It's the same reason. Well, you're never, yeah, you're never going to get a 100% popular vote. I get it. But for me, I think the reason I've always questioned why do we still have guard, not because I don't think, and that's the one thing I want to be crystal clear on. I think guard is a very good coach. He has he leaves more to be desired on in-game adjustments and recruiting, but everybody has their faults. To me, I always looked at it like, what is the expectation for them? Like I've never heard anybody say that it's just to make the tournament. Is that like an unwritten rule? Because I'll be the be the they, first to tell you that. <laughs> yeah. My expectation too. is that the Badgers make the tournament every year, and that's the standard. Yeah. National championship cannot be your expectation in basketball. No, I'm not saying it should, but let's say you make the tournament. And neither can Sweet 16. So if the expectation is to make a tournament, then why did we keep Greg Gard after he's missed two of them? Because he hasn't missed two consecutive. Games. Yeah. So now it's two consecutive, or it's missing eight tournaments. And he's won. And he's won the league in between those. Like, I think if you fire, it matters, Ryan. You really want to fire, matters, dude. If you want to fire a coach every time they don't mm-hmm. adhere to, the, they don't hit the standard, then you no, will no. never have a good program in anything. I think part of like I know I Ryan that like we don't have to rehash that I know that you don't value a regular season title that much, but Chris McIntosh has made it very clear that he wants to compete for Big Ten championships. Like that is his That's standard. Important. And so if if that is what football, basketball lump every athletic program together, the Badgers have, that is what his is what he's shooting for. He said this multiple times. That is the standard, and if we fall from ever being in a place where, like, that's even a even a fucking prayer, then yeah, you have to move on from the guy. But like, he's explicitly stated what the standard is, and so and until like you sway one way or the other, like, I just I I won't see it as like as as polarizing of a take. And I understand and respect anybody who wants that to be a championship, wants it to be anything else, like. Oh, I so don't, yeah. I, I, I don't hate anybody though. for whatever their own individual standard is because fan how you want a fan. I, yeah. I don't care, but like, but at least as we're trying to like dissect maybe what he is thinking or like where they're at, like he said it. And so as long as we're in that realm, like we know where his head's at to some degree, like, is he looking over his shoulder concerned about this? Hell yeah, he is. Like I, I, I can fully admit to you, Ryan, that in the last couple of weeks, you know, like my confidence level in the program has dropped a notch. You know, like I would have entered the season Mine too. saying like probably a seven and like oh, now I'm probably sitting at a five and a half. Like the line, the line between both parties is starting to get a little closer. Like I acknowledge all of this, but we, yeah, but we know that, that means you're on a trajectory going down because if you're going from a seven, like, so is that not- I, I'm, a, I'm aware yeah. of my own opinion and what the numbers mean. I, I get that. I, I, these are pretty simple numbers we're talking. I, I I get all of that. I'm just saying, as it pertains to the man who is in charge, like he said, what the standard is, and so we know, we know where that falls. And like, especially in the Big Ten, in a conference that's so strong, and with the new additions, even more so in basketball and football, winning the league is a huge fucking deal. Huge deal, to me. Boys, we did it again because. Yeah, well, uh, it, I, we I'm telling like, you, we I said like, every week, me and Ryan could just do an art an hour and a half, two hours I, every week. I'm just fucking bickering. Sure, I thought for sure once the Badgers won tonight, we were not going to go down this road. And when we were at like 30 minutes. wasn't even I, on the agenda. I was no. like, 30 minutes, boys. We were at 30 minutes. I was like, I think I might I think I think might move us on and get to the big dog. Well, and, and then push some positivity. And then, and then it just takes it, – it's great, though, because – what would you guys want? I don't. We have like five listeners who listen every week, and I don't think they would want us to just be sucking each other's dicks and agree no. with each other the entire. I mean, time. shout out Jeff. <laughs> shout out who else? Robert Sorensen, yeah. I think it is. I don't Archer, want anybody to think that. I don't want anybody to think that Coop and I are just like trying to bash Ryan. Or, like, it's good. No, we're just banter. No, there's, no, there's so much. This love is good here. ball talk. I, I, yeah. Ryan's my guy. If anyone's I'm hating, they're wrong. Like, Ryan's if any of us were talented at something, we'd be doing something else for fun, but this is all we got. <laughs> yeah. This is all we got, boys. All right. So I'm, I am going to move us on now because now we're getting close to an hour. So oh, I'm what? Guys can't have fun anymore? 
The, the Coors hear, banquets are starting to line up. So I'm with I want to hear I want to hear Dylan's big dog of the week. Big dog. Yeah. So uh, this morning, you know, I got to the office uh, thinking, you know, I'm it's about time to grind, but instead I decided to pivot. You know, I'm. I'm gonna, I'm gonna I'm gonna hit bit I'm gonna hit pivot. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna hit YouTube real quick and just see what's up. And uh, YouTube suggests to me, hey, you know, Coach EJ Whitlow takes over. You know, as the new defensive line coach for the Badgers. You know, a few days ago, he's got a video with Mark Tauscher just walking the field talking about what he's about. I'm like, yeah, you know, I want to check this out. Yeah, EJ Whitlow, you're my dog of the week, uh, man. This guy sold me within the first minute and a half man i became a big ej whitlow guy so quick highly recommend anybody listening listen to it if you haven't mark tauscher goes you know yo ej like tell me tell me what you're about like what you're expecting what you're going to bring to this program and i i I got his answer right here i pulled it up because i want to get this shit tattooed on my back uh, it says toughness, physicality, grit, and that relentless violent effort. That's what we're gonna hang our hat on. We're gonna Hell be tough. Yeah. We're gonna be tough and nasty up front and hunt the fucking ball. And then he goes, "If you're juiceless, you're useless." Oh baby, EJ oh, Whitlow, you're, you're, you you're my big dog of the week, uh, man. I you sold me in a minute and a half. I know you can coach some defensive line. I'd run through a brick wall for you. Man, I, don't know. I love that. How easy are we? Because when the Badgers hired uh, AJ Blazek, we heard I saw one video and, <laughs> and I was like, "This is my first <laughs> <God." laughs> I'm who they're selling to, and let me tell you, it worked. <laughs> yeah. They interviewed with us. They got the job. Moving. Ryan, who you got? Uh, yeah, I mean EJ is a, a good one. I saw that you're mm-hmm. useless. You're useless, and uh, I, I, that's I, a great I, one. I was going to run through the wall too. He reminds me of. Uh, the defensive hire equivalent to uh, Devin Spalding, like young, energetic, connects yep. with the players, is going to push you. And I think that's a great hire so far. Mm-hmm. Obviously, the, the dividends will be paid off in recruiting and actual production, but hell of a first start for him. Uh, yeah, in, fact, in, in, in early March, I'm here for it. Big one. Well, yeah. <laughs> if you're talking ball in early March, I'm, I'm, I'm here for it always. Uh, I talk football literally every day, all day, twice on Sunday. Um, but, my big dog of the week, uh, in, in an ode to our boy Jeff, uh, I did check in on the women's basketball team today. The 13 and 16 basketball team. Yeah. Yeah. They got absolutely fucking hammered they lost <laughs> by 24, but never let a loss distract you from greatness. Sarah but they harder. <laughs> big dog of the week, Sarah Williams set a program record 16 straight game with double double. So shout out, shout out to Sarah Williams, a big yeah. dog. Regular season doesn't matter. So. Hey, well, I, I'm trying. Hey, I'm trying to be better. Okay. <laughs> well, it's all, I, it's I, all I, that. It's all any of us are doing, man. Streaks, but at the no. end of the day, big dog. She set a school record. Anytime you set a yeah. school record, I'm with you. No. Yeah, you're doing. Sarah Williams, dog. Yeah. <laughs> she she's one of very few uh, power five players in in that program. <laughs> who they Ryan? Who they even play today? I didn't even look. Penn State. Oh, uh, yeah. I was gonna say it's funny. Yeah, that's what I was. Gonna Absolute say. shellacking. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, the place. I forgot who they played. I saw like they lost by twenty four, and I said, "Oh, I know I was going to watch that instead of the men's game tonight." But, yeah. <laughs> but thank thank goodness I didn't. I, I got treated to a W tonight. So, Coop, you have six of them. Uh, I have, I have five big dogs. Okay. All right, all right. So we got we got a litter here. This week, fucking litter, <laughs> litter of big dogs. We got a litter, fellas. They were All right, first big dog uh, goes out to a professional rapper, Schoolboy Q. He dropped his first album in five years last Friday. It is quite good. So, if you're a fan of the uh, rap genre of music, which I'm sure like three of our listeners are. Go ahead and listen to that new School by Q album, Blue Lips. It's very good. Shameless plug. I'm, I'm going to be on the road tomorrow, Coop. Uh, send me send me like a couple I should listen to. I'll send, you my, I'll send you my favorite songs. How about that? See, I the thing, Coop knows this. You know, I I, uh, I probably couldn't name four active rappers. No chance. But I also trust Coop's taste in music. If he yeah. gives me that direction, like, hey, listen to this. I know you're going to fuck with this. Like, he's not I, usually wrong. And yes, he I just like would never it. know how to find this on my own. So, yeah. 
<laughs> so yeah, send me a couple. I, I I'm, I'll give it a listen. All right, so that's big dog one of the week. Big dog number two, uh, Braylon Allen. Uh, this fucking dude Terry Call on Twitter. <laughs> I know he you talked about he's a Braylon Allen and he quit on the team when they needed him most. Don't forget that part. And then Braylon Allen just whipped his fucking big old hammer out. You mean when I play through injury to keep the Freedom Trophy home and bring the bring back the axe? Obviously, I had a quote to tweet that he also won me a bunch of money on over ten and a half touchdowns. But yeah, drop the mic. You're right, Ryan. Drop the fucking mic. Shout out Braylon Allen. A lot of athletes, I feel like, wouldn't say that. I mean, maybe more so nowadays with fucking the way Twitter is. But good for Braylon Allen, dude. Fucking standing up for himself and clapping back because he's right. He fought through, and we all, me, Dylan, Jason, Ryan, yeah, Ryan was on the podcast then, but we all said it when Braylon played those like last two games. Like, you could tell those last the boys, two games. The boys like, wanted to play when he was hurt, on the field. bro. Yeah, and it, so it, that moment was like when Michael Scott was standing in front of the office going boom roasted. Like, yep. that, like he was just letting him fucking have it, and I loved it. I Stanley, loved it. your heart sucks. <laughs> You crush your wife through. Yeah, it's just like being roasted. <laughs> Angela? Angela? Oh, I thought that was a piece of rice. <laughs> but no, so shout out Braylon Allen for clapping back on that dude at Twitter because Braylon Allen gave everything he had to this program. No matter what you think of him, what you think of his future prospect status in the NFL or not, that dude gave everything he fucking had to our program and. I can respect that, you know. He was obviously he was a great player, but even if he wasn't, like what he represented as a Badger was awesome. So good for him standing up for himself because I hate people who don't get it and are talking shit like that. Like you could clearly tell against Minnesota that guy was injured and he ran for like what 130 yards and a touchdown or something. Yeah, had himself like a fucking legacy game. Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like dude, fuck off, right. fuck off, dude. <laughs> All right, buddy. <laughs> yeah. He quit on us. He quit on me. We're then, playing the Rely Quest Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> then my next one is um I don't know if anyone else saw this today. Gus Yeldon was wearing a headband on the bench. I did see that actually. <laughs> He's been so, wearing it for a few weeks now. My wife didn't he? notice that tonight too. I man. have not noticed until tonight. That's great. I think he's moved into my top 15 all-time favorite Badgers yeah. with just simply just wearing a headband. So, I, so yeah, I, yeah, I, it hasn't played a second, but... So I, I couldn't love that more from you because my wife said the exact opposite. She told me he'll never come back from this. He'll never, <laughs> he, will, he will never earn back my respect. Damn, dude, usually me and El Boogie are in sync on shit. Not today, though. No, Dylan's Lauren, two biggest loves well, just totally disagreeing on. No, on Lauren things. definitely will judge a book by his cover. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yes, and they, it, The best thank part God is, you didn't do that with me. But. The best part is she has a Gus Bus sweatshirt. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen her wear it in the last like yeah. two weeks. I know, I thought it was awesome. It made me respect him so much more. I was like, man, this guy's wearing a headband. Either one, he's playing way better at practice, or two. He's smoking way more weed than he used <laughs> either, to. Either way, stock up. Exactly. Yeah. Big dog. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and then um, number four here. Shout out, if they're listening, to uh, Brian and Michelle Montre. Uh, these are friends of my mother's from way back in the day. My mom used to be a big uh, church goer, and I used to get drug with her to church, if you could believe that. But, uh, Anywho, I think that's how she met him. She's still friends with this, you know, Michelle Montre. Brian's a good guy. They're all great people. But uh, Brian, I believe he's a big Wisconsin Badger fan. And so they asked my mom. My mom had mentioned to her friend Michelle that we have a podcast. And so she's like, oh, send us the link to the podcast. So my mom sends him the link. And it's like, hey, here you go. Just so you know, it's pretty shocking. <laughs> yeah. This is pretty shocking. Yeah. It's like you might hear a lot of foul language and some shit you don't think you're gonna hear. Churchgoers are gonna love this. Yeah. Well, no. And the thing is, she used to babysit me back when I was a young tyke, like maybe like ten years old, and I was friends with her son back then, Alex. But uh, from where I was at ten years old, I probably haven't seen her in like fifteen years. 
from where I was the last time I saw her until now is a way different Brandon Cooper. <laughs> so I think she got a fucking reality shock from the boys when they watched the podcast. But feed general feedback was they loved it and they thought it was hilarious. Yeah, that's so, good. We'll take shout it. out to them. Yeah, we'll back fans anyway. We'll we take, get it, man. We'll take yeah. feedback as long as it's positive. So, if it's a negative. Shout, I will cry. Shout out Michelle yeah. Montre. I mean, that's that's my dog. She always been my dog. Shout out Brian Montre. It's been a while since I've seen <laughs> her, but. We're an acquired taste, man, and uh, yeah, you know, for some people, we don't age like a fine wine, but we'll, no. we'll take them however we can get them. We're cool, so I'm glad they appreciated it. But yeah, they used to like babysit me back in the day. When I was just some sweet, innocent kid who was like worried about people being lactose intolerant, and now I'm threatened to beat up eight year old women with twelve packs of fucking High Life at a gas station. Life comes at you fast. Right? <laughs> it does, <laughs> it, it, really does. <laughs> it really does. All right, and then. Jesus Christ, I'm going on here. Who's at the end of the litter? <laughs> this is <laughs> hey, the runt. No, this isn't the runt. I say the best for last. You're gonna feel real you're gonna feel super oh, bad. This is, big, big I, this is this is who I was probably you're, gonna pick for my You're gonna feel super bad, Jason, because this isn't the runt. Howard Moore is the biggest dog of the week. Oh okay. yeah. no, no, that's no, that, no that, that, asshole. No, yeah, that, that's who I was going to have as my other big dog. And I said, I think someone else will probably take it. So I'll yeah. take off it. Howard Moore, Dude, man, he stole the show. That was awesome. I love how they televised that whole thing, too. Yes. It was so yeah. cool seeing him there. I get we lost. Like, whatever. The game doesn't matter at that point. It was just so cool seeing everyone from Wisconsin and Illinois side. Like, even the Illinois, like, oh, um, radio man. and TV, TV announcers. The coach, like everyone know H two. Yeah. They knew how special that moment was. Like it was just super cool to see, like, not being at the game and on TV. Cause a lot of times they don't show that shit. And they'll just show like a 30 second highlight. But like it was so cool to see that because one, Howard Moore deserved that. Um, his son deserved that. And it's just great to see like the Badger community. When we've had a lot of turmoil at the end of the season, you know, everyone's bitching about Greg Gard, how bad we've been doing. But to see everyone come together in that moment and forget about the team or our record or how bad or how good we're playing and just be a family like basketball's supposed to be, it was super cool. So Howard Moore, biggest dog of the week. Honestly, big dog of the year, man. Shout out to Howard Moore. Uh, I went to the Lions basketball camp once and – he was, uh, he coached me. So Howard Moore, great guy. I, was I almost went with his forward. son, but I was like, I'm not picking a child for my big dog of the week. But probably a good girl. I had to go through. I I almost picked him as my big dog of the week, Jarrell Moore. Man, I, no, I, I was in a room full of aggressively. I cried. I cried during that. There was not a fucking dry yeah. eye in the room, man. That's I, the, I cried. That was no, that was really cool, man. That's yeah. the beauty of sports, right there. My dad came over to watch the game, and he didn't know anything about Howard Moore. And so I was kind of telling him, like, what happened and everything. And then, yeah, like I looked over, like, I'm crying. I looked over, like, a minute and a half later, my dad's crying. It's like, but, like, you couldn't help but feel, even if you didn't know the whole story, you couldn't help but feel that entire emotion when that whole, like, event was happening at the Cole Center. Yeah, like, I know. Like, Chucky yeah. gave in his post game presser too, kind of was saying how yeah. like, this is this is way more than the game. This is like why why he's proud to put on that Badger jersey, which yeah. is cool to hear from for, for as a fan, you know that but, it means more to the players too. And even like Greg Gard saying when they asked him about like you know do you think he knew what was going on or whatever, and he's like the Greg Gard was like the way he grabbed me, like he knew where he was. Yeah, like, and cool. I, it was awesome. So yeah, we. I'm about to start crying again, but yeah. Shout out to Howard Moore, big dog of the week. And now in an hour and eight minutes, we can move on to what are we doing That's here? <laughs> That's a good one. You know what? I'm Since I'm hosting, I'm going to do what I want. Uh, I'm going to kick us off on what are we doing here. Uh, just because it just came to me a little bit ago, um, I noticed it. And Ryan, I swear this is not a shot at you, but you've said it before. I think we need to stop the putting Killa before everything. Because I saw a bunch of Killa Kamari or Killa Kamari, <laughs> and that shit pissed me off so much. Because you said Killa Klesman earlier. You have no, said no, no. Killa. Well, no, you repeated it. 
Yeah, yeah I repeated, repeated it because uh, Evan Flood had tweeted it. That's who did it. Yes. That's yes. Who did it. Yeah. Okay, so I'm glad you were being I'm facetious. back you up there, Ryan. Yep. I'm glad you were being facetious about it because he yeah. he he tweeted kill a cam, and I was just like, we got to stop this shit. Man, what are we doing here? Yeah. Hey, shout out kill a cam. Oh, fuck. <laughs> shout out kill a cam, though. Kill a cam. Like hell of a rapper, yeah. dude. I was like, just because they have a K in their name. you don't Of course, have to that's a rapper. It. So, yeah, Cam- Cameron. You what, know, what's, what's, what's wrong with just going with your name? I, <laughs> His name is Cameron. He's Killer Cam. Cameron from the locks. I don't know. In my genre, most people just nope. go by first last. <laughs> <laughs> Luke Holmes. Killer, Killer Luke. Killer Luke. <laughs> I'm going to see Killer Luke in April, man. Me too. I, I'm, I'll see you. I'll see you there, man. I'll okay, we got to link up. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be feeling dangerous that day. Yeah. I'm gonna wake up see, feeling dangerous. Going to see Sam Hunt next week too. Not to get off the topic too much. Be but... seeing Tim in April too. Nice. You know, Tim, yeah, you know. But I'll figure my wife and I figure we might as well go see him before he's too washed. Yeah, love yeah, that. Seen him. Him, seen him a few times. Trying to see him again before it's too late. Luke Combs, yeah. Sam Hunt. No one's worried about Young Thug, Killer Mike. <laughs> Sad to see. You know, anyone listening on the podcast for him, Cooper's been mobile for like thirty <laughs> seconds here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always mobile, brother. Ryan, you got what are we doing here? Because otherwise, we're gonna have to buckle in for whatever Coop's got in store. Yeah, Ryan, you got one. He said he did. Yeah. Uh, well, I don't want to go back and rehash anything, but uh, well, my what are we doing here is with Greg Gard towards the end of the game. Like you're up by 17 points. How do I mute somebody? <laughs> <laughs> You're up by 17 points. Like I start, like I started to get like on the couch. I started to get legitimately like agitated. Like, are you gonna fuck this up? And Tyler's not gonna get out of the game. Oh, because me too. Yeah. I'm, all right, there. You took players. You you literally benched Chucky, brought Chucky back in, and then I think took him back out. And Tyler's still on the. I'm like, all right, 40 seconds. 30 seconds. Like, are we going to get this fucking guy out so we can show our appreciation? <laughs> well, then we started turning the ball over again. Yeah. Yeah. Was was like, what the fuck? I, I, I thought you could have very easily had that moment during that set of free throws at like a minute. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was like two minutes I thought he was going to do it. Yeah, oh, I I it I'll give you that, right? I'll give you that. No, I tweeted I'm out. Tyler Wall missed his last two free throws ever at the Cole Center. I saw that. Like that. And then he played like three more minutes. I was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to get him a bucket, but the, because they kept trying to pass it to him, and that's why yeah. I turned it over. It's like just take him out with a minute and a half, give a standing ovation. Because if you take a timeout instead of that, then you get like the whole, like you get a whole like yeah. thirty seconds to a minute. Like it was more rushed. But I also wanted to point out, I don't know how true this is. This is a little little uh, word find we got to do. Someone said AJ. I saw this in the Discord, so or maybe on Twitter. Someone said AJ store kissed the floor when he was coming out too. So I'm not um, trying to start any rumors, but I did see that online, and I was like, "Wait, what's that about?" I wonder why he kissed I mean, the floor. I, I think he'd be crazy not to put himself through the process and just see. So I, I think he'd be crazy not to go come back. Well, I don't know. I, how I'm just saying. I saw if you don't hire an agent, you can go through the process. So I, no, I know. You know, I'm just like I. I think he'd be crazy not to test the waters and just get the feedback. Well, you never well, know. You never know. You don't want to live life with regret, man. Yeah, but one it, of my it, notes, I don't think I covered it tonight, but one of my notes in the first half was AJ Store needs to fucking chill. Because he was <laughs> he was out of control in the first half, dude. So you can't be doing that if you want to play in the fucking NBA. But teach his own. I mean, he's obviously he's talented enough to play in the NBA. I think he needs another year in college, though. I and I am also being super selfish, and I just want him to play another year for the Badgers. That's where I'm at, is I'm just selfish on it. So. Yeah. Coop, let's hear your what are we doing here? Coop, All right, I got you three us home with five. I got, <laughs> I, I got to step in. I got, I got a positive one. I'm gonna throw in before oh, I go inevitably bring us home. Hell yeah! Me on the spot as we were talking about it. <laughs> it's it, you know, it's it's kind of it's gonna be along the lines of what we got with Ryan, uh, you know, a few weeks ago when he was talking about wrestling and just his experience. You know, like getting the opportunity. Like, what am I doing here? Why am I here? Like in a positive light, and uh, you know, tonight. You know, my boy Christian Borman, he was at the game tonight uh, covering it. And I just uh, kind of collectively, like, you know, Badger Notes a really small community of really talented individuals, people who care a whole lot. And uh, I just want to give a shout out to Jake, Kedrick, Christian, um, you know, my, 
like we, the four of us were able to cover every Wisconsin basketball game in person this year, um, you know, from local media day to the final home game. And it's just surreal. Like, you know, I growing up Wisconsin men's basketball, I would argue outside of maybe the Green Bay Packers, probably my favorite thing on planet Earth. Like that's just my favorite thing in the whole world. And so it's just surreal that we had the opportunity to do that. And I want to give a shout out to to the fellows that have been putting in a lot of work behind the scenes and doing some really cool stuff. And uh, we had no business being here. That's kind of the whole thing. Like, what what are we doing here? Uh, we still don't have the answer and maybe someday we'll figure it out. But, uh, you know, I, I don't I don't think any of us would have some of these opportunities for, and for some of the guys standing next to us. I just want to give a shout out to uh, to those guys working their ass off this year, putting out some doing some really, really special stuff and, uh, you know, hopefully getting to have a couple special moments along the way. I don't know. What, no, I still don't. I still don't know what we're doing here. It was, <laughs> it was awesome. Like reading everyone's stuff after every game, and just it's like, oh, Badger notes like has credentials. Like, do they realize who we are? <laughs> like, how unserious this operation can be? <laughs> yeah, Dylan, definitely yeah. want to echo that. And thanks to anybody who listens to this, reads any stuff that's posted, because we only. I mean, we would do it whether you'd listen or not because we're just a bunch of dumb idiots. Well, oh, I'm a narcissist. I love to, yeah. I do appreciate myself. it. And I will say, like, I, I've i never met him before, but I, I started following Kedrick because of Badger Notes. And he's one of my favorite followers on Twitter. Yes. He has so much data. He knows so much about everything. He's, he's so a like, special he, talent, he's man. He's a great I'm, follow on Twitter. He's on the uh, – sorry, Kedrick. He might be on the spectrum. <laughs> Jesus. No. What are we doing Kedrick, here, cool? Bro, Kedrick, he's even said it himself. Talent. Like once he hones in on something, he gets like super hyper focused. And I feel like that's one of the traits. I, no, I, man, I I'm here to tell you, Kedrick. I love the guy. I'm not saying like, dude, he's I haven't met him. He's a great Twitter follower, and I'm not trying to be disrespectful. Like, I mean it in the most polite way possible. Uh, like he's one of those like brain like it's like you're too smart to be normal. <laughs> I mean, he, right, he's cool. special talent man and eventually life's going to take him somewhere well, a lot further yeah than so no, Raymond was a special talent too I, I look i look forward to the day that we get to eventually get to claim him coop what are we doing here well um, accusing people of having fucking autism that don't have it <laughs> but other than that <laughs> other, than, other than that you know not a whole hell of a lot but uh I got, you see, um, there was a new jalapeno put on the market. Anyone else see this? Not up on the jalapeno game. <laughs> no, you guys aren't up on the jalapeno game. Okay, well, it's a new jalapeno that's not hot. Seems so it's kind of productive. Hot. Yep. Guess who made it? Yeah. I'll give you each one guess. Bill Gates. Bill Gates. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. How did you guys both guess that? This is the same guy who made makes fake meat and other Whoa. shit. Way he's, off. He's a, he's a fucking loser. Are you Jay? sure it's a cucumber? What's that? It's not just he a cucumber. Some cucumbers. No. It's a non-hot jalapeno. All right. Who made it? The University of Texas A&M decided nah, to make oh, a non man. decided to make a non-hot jalapeno. Is How that is needed another actual... reason to hate these guys? I've hate I <laughs> I hate A and M. Probably more than Nebraska at this point. Between the yell leaders and all the other stupid shit they fucking do for football season, now you're really you're in Texas and you're not gonna make hot jalapenos, dude. How is the cartel not burn that fucking university to the ground, Juan? Yeah, they're doing Texas wrong. It's just like it's, go ahead, Eric, Coach you Eric Taylor wouldn't be having that. that. No. <laughs> What's that, Ryan? Uh, Daddy Fast Sacks has to weigh in on that. Daddy Fat Sacks is everywhere, brother. <laughs> Don't worry. He's big A and M guy. <clears throat> check in with him. <laughs> yeah, Daddy Fat Sacks has has commented on this situation. I'll just leave it at that. But it's a fuck. Like, what are we doing here? You're making a jalapeno that's not hot. Are you kidding me? It's a spit in the face to every like, fucking cu- cucumbers already you exist. Small man. green pepper off. Like it's just fucking ridiculous. It's mini that's, green peppers. That's my first one. My second one, I really hope the HR lady at this fictional workplace doesn't hear this one. So let's just say there's a warehouse in McFarland, Wisconsin, just by happenstance. 
you know, we're just creating a fictional story here. Yeah, and right. uh, we have like, an, or not we, this place has an, a, an attendance point system. You know, if certain employees get to ten in te- attendance points, they're automatically terminated. Well, this fictional place had an employee get to 15 and a half attendance points and this fictional human resources person still doesn't want to let them go. And this fictional person who happens to be a manager and does a podcast about the Badgers doesn't agree with that. They're fun. So, yeah. You have standards and expectations or you don't. That's what I'm saying. Fuck off. <laughs> like, fuck off. <laughs> well played. That was a good one. That was a good one. <laughs> that was a fucking good one. Yeah. <laughs> but no, so fuck this shit. The HR lady at my fucking work it drives me absolutely fucking insane, dude. But uh, I swear, I, I don't care if she hears this. She drives, me fuck. she drives me fucking crazy. But we got some dude who should have been terminated on like Monday. And he's still not terminated because she's she wants him to come into work tomorrow to sign a letter saying that he's been terminated. I was like, why just email the fucking guy? Like, what are we doing here? So I I can get way more into this, but I probably shouldn't in case someone hears this. But fuck that HR lady, dude. Fuck that HR lady. I'll say that. I fucking uh she drives me crazy. I feel bad for Person getting fired tomorrow. <laughs> and then my last, my last one here, fellas. This is uh kind of along the uh, same lines as how do zoos get animals? <laughs> I was that one took me for a fucking roller coaster. I didn't oh, well, that coming. Dylan, I'm get ready. up. Get ready, brother. Because I was higher than fucking draft pussy the other day. <laughs> and I forget what I was watching. And it's like, it was like the John Mulaney bit he did like a special or two ago where he's talking about like when you were a kid, you thought like quicksand would be like a huge problem. Like, yeah, you're going to take I-94, but there's some quicksand. So you want to get off at I-30. And to me, it's like, as an adult, like when you're a kid, you're way more worried about getting hit in the dick. But like as an adult, like it's not like get, getting hit in the fucking dick's not a thing, is it? Right? Like I, that's because Nate Butler moved to Hudson. Like, well, I, that's <laughs> <laughs> like when's the last time? When's the last time like you got hit in the fucking dick and you're like, oh fuck, that hurt. Mine was a my mine was via tennis ball in my parents' backyard. When my uncle Randy was taking batting practice and I was playing third base, I fucking threw up. So here's where I'm gonna push back on that a little bit. Is just uh, I've got a three year old whose head is See, at groin level. Yeah, I have a dog. And uh, so for me, it's like a really active issue. Like if I'm not paying close enough attention, it'll happen inadvertently. So uh, that's gotta be on a swivel. It, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it <laughs> it comes back around. Yeah, I'm just talking about like getting like not getting your dick touched, like getting punched or like hit swat in the dick. Because there's a huge difference. Yeah, have kids. They'll punch one feels dick. good, one hurts. <laughs> like baby, love ain't hurt in a while. So I just it was just a wild thing I was thinking about. I was like, dude, I can't remember the last time like I got punched in the cock. Like, I don't know. It sounds like life's been good to you, dog. Yeah, like, no, and honestly, you know what? I've been going great life, lately. Man. I got a raise at work the other day. Like, it's life's been going great. Uh, Sometimes you just don't need to ask questions. Life's life just treats you the way it ought to. You're definitely yeah. you're definitely getting punched in the dick in the next. Oh, hundred percent. All I can think is karma. I'm getting fucking right smoked back. by somebody. To, probably my HR lady. She's gonna <laughs> fucking. Yeah, I'm forwarding this to your work. You're gonna <laughs> the sad thing is, I think Dylan might be the only person who knows where I work. <laughs> I, can burn, I can burn this motherfucker. To the yeah, like super <laughs> Dylan could ruin my life really quick. La- hey, last week you kind of narrowed it down with your T crossing on the highway, and you got. Well, I, well you road. know. <laughs> yeah, I, I've dropped some hints here and there, you know. <laughs> well, after an hour twenty three and cock punching, that feels like a good time <laughs> to 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 close down the show. Uh, if you made it this far, thanks for listening. 
Love love the spirit of debate, boys. On Wisconsin.